All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our March 223 edition of My Home Kitchen. I'm Sarah Polson, one of the bariatric dietitians. This month, we are switching it up. We have Jennifer Hosier, a.k.a. Jenny from the Block in the kitchen today. <laughs> Uh, you might be asking, why are we switching it up? Some of you may already know that I'll be relocating to Eastern Idaho in June. So we're getting Jen up to speed on the cooking portion of the class. So when the new dietitian, AKA the newbie comes on, she'll be well-versed on the cooking and tech side of the class in order to train said newbie. So let's get started. We'll be leading you through some recipes today that are focused on breakfast with a St. Patty's Day spin. Now, before I jump over to Jen, some basic announcements. Please keep in mind that you need to be signed up for every cooking class to receive the email invite if you want to attend live. Check your MyChart account to assure you're still signed up for future classes that you're interested in attending. Now, if you're watching the recorded version of this class and would like copies of the recipes, please send a request to support at slhs.org which is also shown on the screen here right now. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're in class today, we sent you copies of the recipes that they were attached to the email you received to enter class today. So let's go to Jen and see what she has going on. Give me one minute. I'm practicing the tech now too. All right, now. Uh, okay. okay. All, All right, right, guys. Yes, hello. New, new format. We're getting ready for Sarah to leave. Super sad face right there. But that's okay. She'll be on to new and fantastic things. So, my turn in the kitchen today. And what we've got going here are some breakfast recipes. And we're going to start with a low carb eggs Benedict. So first things first, because we're always trying to get vegetables in, is we are going to toss some asparagus into the oven and get it roasting. Now, before we really get that tossed in, a few things about the asparagus. First of all, I already snipped all the ends, drizzled some oil on them, sprinkled some salt, so they're good for just some basic roasting. But when it comes to preparing your asparagus, I got my super tiny one right here. What you want to do is to snip off the woody end. And the easiest way to figure out where the woody end is, is to just let it snip naturally. So we just kind of do this and a whole lot of it came off, but that must have been all of the woody part. So now we're left with the rest of our asparagus. And you can do that with all of them if you want to. That's usually what I do at home, but this particular batch, I don't know if you're able to see it too well. That is a ton of asparagus stalks, right? It was a whole bunch of really, really small ones. And I, don't, I didn't want to sniff them all. That's a long time. So what you can do if you don't want to actually do all the snipping is you snip one, you kind of find where the woody part is for that size stalk. And they should be all fairly similar size stalks. And then you can go ahead and line them all up. And then you can cut at the place where your woody stock snipped off on your first one. And then you're just cutting all the rest of them. It's a lot faster that way. So that's what we did because I didn't want to snip all these. So we're going to get that guy in there. And we're going to pop these into the oven at 400 degrees. And we're going to shoot for eight to 10 minutes or, you know, kind of whenever they're done. I like them to start getting a little bit of a char on them, just a little bit of brown. So we're gonna stick those in there and I'm gonna do a timer. We're gonna do a timer for 10, I think. We'll see how, what we get with that guy and then start, there we go. So while those are roasting in the oven and we need to prepare our English muffin and we have a low carb English muffin recipe here for you. What's beeping at me? Oh, did I? Oh, mine at home does it different. All right, hold on. Stand by. We'll try it again. 10. More, more. There we go. I was like, that was quick. They're not done yet. Okay, so now we need to get our English muffin getting going. So first, what we want to do is we got our butter. 
in our coffee mug. Just the regular standard coffee mug is what I've got here, a tablespoon of butter inside. And we are gonna melt this, right? So just a few seconds in the microwave. It's not gonna take too long at all to get that guy all melted down. And then we'll go ahead and incorporate the rest of our ingredients, get it all stirred up really, really well. And then we'll toss it back into the microwave to actually cook it. And if you haven't done this before, I think you'll be surprised at how nice and easy it actually turns out. Uh, it's pretty good. I was really impressed when, when we did it in the cooking class practice a couple weeks ago. So um, we got our, our butter all melted in here. So I'm gonna start first with the egg. So we're gonna pop that guy in here, get that all stirred in. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my ingredients. So we've got three tablespoons of almond flour. We got a little bit of oregano, cause it's green, cause it's St. Patty's Day, by the way. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you're wearing green or someone's going to pinch you. All right, so we got our green at least here in our muffin. A little bit of salt, right? Nothing, nothing too crazy. And then we definitely need a little bit of leavening. So we got half a teaspoon of baking soda, right? Baking soda, nope, baking powder in there. I promise I used the right one. I just always forget which one I'm supposed to say when I'm looking at that. So now we're gonna go ahead and pop it back into the microwave for 60 seconds right not too long and it's gonna go ahead and rise for us 60 seconds or a minute however you want to count that I actually put in a whole minute just one not like one second on it this time so that's good so that will cook will bake and it will rise really nicely and when we get it out then we'll go ahead and make sure that the edges are all nice and separated from the mug and we should just be able to pop it right out and let it rest and cool for a few minutes while we start some of the other elements of this recipe so trying to make sure we're using our time well during all of the cooking of everything also what i do have going here because i'll be stirring it on occasion is the hollandaise sauce and we'll talk about that in a few minutes but i'm going to have my hand on that guy every few minutes just making sure that it's stirring because you never want to let a hollandaise sit, sauce sit too long or you get this congealed mass because i've done that before and it's really sad i don't know if any of you guys have made hollandaise sauce before but uh if you don't get it right it's uh it's a real sad waste of a few egg yolks which is like i don't know five dollars these days or something like that so this is what it looks like there, right? So it actually rose pretty nicely into that mug. So what we'll do now, moment of truth. Okay, are you ready? Let's see what we get. Ta-da! I don't know if you're able to see that really well. There we go. It looks like a mug-shaped English muffin. Right. Okay, so that's what we got here. And it's, I don't know if you can see it steaming. It's really, really hot. It's gonna be too hot to handle, to, to cut or anything like that. So we're gonna let that cool and we'll come back to that shortly. But now we need to get on to the rest of this recipe here. Let me just toss these things off to the side. So what do we wanna do next? We need to start looking at getting our eggs. And while we're gonna be working on our eggs, we're just gonna go ahead and heat our Canadian bacon. So we're gonna put this in the pan over here. Nothing too crazy. I'm just gonna turn this on so it warms a little bit. We don't want it to get super hot, just a little bit warm while it's over there. So now we gotta poach some eggs. I don't know if any of you guys have poached eggs before. I don't like it. Not my favorite thing. So sometimes I'll make eggs Benedict at home and you know what I do? I scramble the eggs because I'm kind of lazy about the poaching thing. However, I think we found a new way. I think this is gonna be better. It's the vortex method. So what that means is we're gonna create a vortex. Surprise, surprise. What I've got over here on the side is some water that I've been boiling. 
and we'll turn that down here so that it's not quite boiling in just a minute because we still want it pretty hot. If we let it get too cool, we're not gonna cook our eggs really well. So on top of that, there's a little bit of preparation that you need to do with your eggs to really help. Because if you've ever poached eggs, you drop it in and it's like this cloud of wispies and the egg is kind of disintegrating. Some of the white is getting all floating around and it doesn't hold together very well. And then it's hard to fish out, right? So we wanna see if we can avoid that. So what we want to do is actually strain our eggs first. And what we're doing is we're straining off any of the watery part of the white that has developed over time. If you happen to have fresher eggs, you're likely not gonna have too much of the watery part there. The more they sit, the more watery part develops. So if you have eggs from the store, if you happen to be using them sooner or closer to when you purchase them, you'll probably have a little bit less of that wateriness to them. And of course, if you have chickens or know someone and you get really, really fresh eggs that way, then, um, then you'll be in really good shape. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna go ahead and strain it. And that seems really weird, but if you have a fine mesh sieve, it works really well. And so I know it'll be hard for you to see, but if you do it at home, you'll see a lot of watery part just immediately strain right out. And we don't need to be super, super thorough there. We just want some of that initial wateriness to go ahead and strain right out of there. And then we're gonna gently pour it into our little ramekin. And then we're gonna reserve that to the side there for when we're gonna get ready to actually go ahead and put that in the water. So I'll do my other one here. And we'll get that guy. Oh, I broke it. Uh-oh. I better get a new one. Right back. Hold up. It's coming. This is why we have spares, you guys. Because things happen. Especially involving, involving eggs. Things always happen in the kitchen. You just got to work with it. Oh. They always set right. Even when we're at home, all sorts of stuff is happening. All right. Take two on the egg. Here we go. This one's gonna do it, we got it. Yes, intact. Okay, so we're gonna strain this guy out too, get all the wateries out. And I'm gonna turn my water down a little bit more. That's the right one. Okay, so yeah, we'll just turn this down even more. There we go. So it is just settling down from boiling. So part of this trick is also gonna include some vinegar. Vinegar is gonna help feel or hold all of these wispies together. So that sounds weird. And you're not gonna get a vinegary egg, okay? Cause we tasted these, you don't get a vinegary tasting egg. So you don't have to worry about that. And it's just a regular vinegar. Basically you want a, a, a lighter colored vinegar. So if you have just kind of your standard white vinegar, we actually have rice vinegar cause that's what we had. So that's what we use, you know, Waste not, want not. That's what we're doing there. So then what we got to do is we got to create our vortex. So when you're doing this, you do want to make sure that you have at least four inches of water. Also learned that if you don't have that, it doesn't work very good. So you want to make sure that as you're getting your water up to boil, you're keeping it. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this or not very well. You want to make sure that you are, are keeping the water enough in. We got it? Yeah, we can kind of see it. So let's see what we get. Hopefully we get two really, really great eggs. So we got to get our vortex going. And then we're going to pour this gently to the middle. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Can you guys kind of see it? Sort of. You can see it. It's kind of spinning in the middle. And once it hits the water and it starts to seal on the outside, that vortex holds it together. And then it's just going to continue to cook you know, we cook it for about three minutes and then you're going to get this really, really nice, beautiful, held together, no wispies included poached egg. So we're going to let this sit for a couple more minutes before we pull in our other egg and get that one going. So while we're waiting for that little guy to poach itself, all right, now it's, now it's beeping at me. Oh, the asparagus. Let's check the asparagus. Sarah's reminding me because I'm kind of all over the place in my mind here today. 
Let's see what the asparagus looks like. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. I mean, it looks nice and bright and green. I might give it another minute or two. Always better to check, I think, a little early than too late because hmm, well, then it's too late. So what we'll do, we'll give that egg another minute or two on the clock, is we're going to cut this English muffin. We're going to get it toasting. You're going to want to toast this. It's a little spongy. It's not really going to have the best texture if you leave it as is. So, you know, give it a good toast. And this guy rolls really, really nicely. I think if we cut it in half, it's going to be super thick. I think if we go in thirds, which gives us an extra snack for later, then it's going to be a good thickness, okay? So let's get our English muffin chopped. So, oh, that one has a hole in it. That'll be the spare. So this, let me hold it up a little bit better. This is what you got, right? So you got this really pretty good looking, I don't know if you can see it well with the light, but there it is. Yeah, so we've got just this two really good thirds. So we are going to move over to the toaster and we are gonna pop them in there and get these going. So here we go. There it is, right over here. Wah. Gonna pop it in the toaster, probably not too long. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because again, I don't wanna over toast. So we'll let those guys go. We'll get a little bit of a browning on them and we're gonna head back over here and let's check this first poached egg. It's been in there for a couple, it's looking pretty good. It's a little jiggly. I give it just a few more seconds. We'll give our hollandaise sauce here another stir. So this is a hollandaise sauce recipe we developed. We meaning Sarah, really this time. It was really Sarah last year because we had another breakfast class, and so we had a recipe with a hollandaise sauce. But we were trying to make some adjustments. Again, we meaning Sarah. We're trying to make some adjustments to, first of all, bring down the fat content a little bit, because if you've made hollandaise sauce, you can get like a whole stick of butter in there and it tastes amazing. But for some people, that's a little too heavy. It's a little too rich, especially if this is something that perhaps you are going to go ahead and use fairly early after, say, a weight loss surgery. You know, it might be a little bit too heavy on your new stomach. So everyone's a little bit different. So we just want to try and be considerate of that. So we came up with some adjustments to that. Okay, you guys, can you see it? Oh, it's white on white. But do you see how here? It's all held together. Isn't that awesome? This is going to be like one of my newfound things in the kitchen. My husband's going to be so impressed with me. It's beautiful, Jen. Absolutely beautiful. It's it's my oh, pretty close. All right, so that means we got to do our vortex again. So let's do our vortex. And we're going to create our little swirl here. If you're doing a lot of poached eggs, it's probably not the most convenient way to do it. But if you're only doing a couple, it's not too bad. And then what you can do, if you're thinking, well, I mean, that sounds really awesome, but I don't want to do a whole bunch of work right before I'm going to have people over or I prefer to have sort of a relaxing breakfast instead, and I don't want to go to all of that work in the morning, you can make these ahead of time. So if you want to take the time to poach ahead of time and then let them dry off a little bit on your paper towel, and then go ahead, um, you're actually going to want to submerge them into ice water first. So drop them in some ice water, cool them down like you would with, with hard boiled eggs, and then go ahead and let them dry for a few minutes. And then you can just pop them in the refrigerator. When it's time to reheat them, Drop them in some warm water for maybe 30 seconds or so just to kind of get them warmed through. And then you've got your ready made eggs. Easy peasy, right? Good to go. So we're going to let this guy, this one might be even better. I'm really excited about this. This is good. Feeling really good about myself right now. So let's go over here. Let's go ahead and check. Our toasted English muffin. I'm gonna reach in. So this is pretty good. It's got a little toast on it. I'll be honest with you. I would like a little more toast. I'm doing it again. There we go. Back over here. I'm making Sarah work today. Asparagus. Oh, fine. All right. We'll check the asparagus. Oops. 
So let's see what we got here. What does Kenya say? Kenya says, Jen, check the asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> and Janet did too. Asparagus, <laughs> Jen. <laughs> Y'all out there in TV land are keeping track <laughs> considering maybe you're not doing their jobs. So, thank you. You're, you're supposed to be able to manage all this, Jen. <laughs> Just kidding. I am supposed to be able to manage all of this. Just like in my house. <laughs> yeah, so nothing ever burns or doesn't cooked or forgotten about in my house ever. Not true. So yeah, we got our asparagus. That's pretty good. I mean, we could put it in longer, but I don't think we have to. I think this is gonna be fine as is. It's definitely cooked. I got all my moms and my cooks out there keeping track of me. Thank you, you guys. And you got my back, that's awesome. And just so you guys know, Jen always has my back when I'm in the kitchen. She's in the back, like tapping her wrist, tapping her wrist and like yes. giving me the eyes and stuff too. So she's doing awesome. <laughs> All of that, yeah, I'm just usually doing. Okay, this guy's still looking a little bit jiggly for my taste, so we'll give that um, just maybe another minute. I heard my, yeah, my, my English muffin. Oh, you guys, oh, this looks so good. Okay, so let me see, we'll, we'll see if we can get in close. I know it's kind of hard to see, they're hot, but they're toasted, woo. Yeah, toasted. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, a little crunchy. Right, a little bit crispy, gonna be awesome. And then we got our spongy hole in the middle one over here. We got the dud, that's all right. So we'll, we'll use it. Sarah and I will fight over it later, it'll be fine. Sarah might out arm wrestle me, but I think I could run faster probably. So I guess it depends on what kind of fight we're talking about here with that. So we've got our guys here and I think probably now, yeah, that's looking good. I mean, we still want a, a little bit of run to it, you know, not a lot. I guess it really depends on your preference, but truly a poached egg is supposed to have a little bit of that gooey in the middle. So you want to make sure it's got a little bit of jiggle on it in the middle. You got to wiggle it just a little bit, just kind of like that. And we've got those settings to the side. Now, before we assemble, we probably need to finish getting this hollandaise sauce done, right? So I started it before class because this particular recipe does seem to take a few minutes. So if you are going to do this whole meal with this particular hollandaise sauce, I would certainly suggest that you start the hollandaise sauce first because again, with the adjustment, it just changes a little bit of that cooking time. So what we've got in here actually are the egg yolks. That's pretty standard in a hollandaise sauce. I know they're cutting off my head. Um, we got our, our egg yolks. And then we got a little bit of lemon juice. We got a little bit of salt in here. And then we're gonna use coconut yogurt. Now you don't typically put yogurt in a hollandaise recipe, but our dear friend, Sarah Bear, can't do dairy. And so we thought, well, we better come up with something so that she can actually still have it. It also then is gonna work for any of you guys out there in TV land who also, for whatever reason, maybe can't handle dairy. So this is just a plain coconut yogurt that we put in there. Got a little bit of that zing on it. So it does kind of add a nice extra element here to this yogurt. And then we do have some butter. We're not gonna totally take the butter out because what would life be without a little butter, right? So let's go ahead. I melted the butter, it's about a half a cup. Usually again with a standard hollandaise, you're doing more like three quarters to one cup of butter. So I'm just stirring this in. And then we gotta add a little zip and flavor. So we've got our paprika in here too. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna stir this in and it's gonna add a lot of nice color and flavor. And then, you know, again, it just kind of depends on what you like. Some folks like to put that little bit of cayenne in there, just to get a little of a pop. And it, you know, usually it's just a dash of that, but that can work really, really well as well. If you wanna get a little bit more of a zip on your hollandaise sauce. So I think this has come together here very, very nicely. So hopefully you guys can see all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'll assemble. We will pull it together. So we've got our muffins, right? We need our ham, AKA the Canadian bacons. We're gonna pull this over. Let's slide that guy on there. We need our 
really nicely poached eggs. If I do say so myself, there we go. Try not to drop them everywhere. Yeah, so there we go. Oops, it kind of got away from me. We got an egg, an egg on the run. There we go. So hopefully you guys can see that they're pretty good. Now we need the sauce. So when you little the sauce, I need a spoon. Let's get a spoon. There we go. Spoon this guy in. And we're just going to kind of do a little bit of a drizzle. Oh, you guys. Oh, and also, you know what holiday sauce is great for? Moisture. So if you're a little worried about moisture, not having enough moisture in some of your foods, this is a nice way to add some of that flavor. And then I did say vegetable, so we got to have our asparagus. We're going to go ahead and pull a little bit, a little bunch of that on over here. We're going to set it to the side. I know maybe it sounds a little weird, but it's going to taste really, really good. I think you're actually going to like this. And we're going to put asparagus over that too. Just give it a nice little drizzle. There we go. And voila. Breakfast like you are Emeril Lagasse. This is the one right here. You're going to wow all of your friends and family members with this one. So that I think is everything. Did I get it all, sir? Did I forget anything? I think I got it all. Last time I forgot eggs in the uh no, you got it all, Jen. Good job. Good right. job. Clean, clean up time. Commercial, commercial break. That's, that's what we're going to want to go for here. I'm going to clean this all up. Sarah's going to chat at you for a few minutes, and then we'll go ahead and get the next recipe going. All right, you guys, give me a second. I'm learning how to manage all this tech stuff that Jen is doing. It is a lot because it's not, there's not an awesome way to do it because the the camera in the room is so far away you wouldn't be able to to see what Jen's doing in the kitchen all right we had some cool comments in the chat box a lot of chit chat going on we appreciate it you guys so uh Brittany her sister is her egg dealer and she's blessed with fresh fresh eggs 80 to 100 every other week she goes through a lot of eggs oh that would be heaven um I used to have chickens in my backyard but i didn't have a good way to block them off and they they ruined my yard so one day when we have more property i'll get more um okay so yes that was a lot of asparagus michelle um and if you wanted it to be a little bit more charred without it burning you could have uh, divided that into two pans but we wanted it to steam a little bit so it'd be nice and soft and for any of you guys that are on the soft foods diet um if you have more um vegetables on your baking sheet they will they kind of steam each other and so you'll left you'll be left with softer vegetables versus um if there's less on the baking sheet uh you'll be left with the char uh which we jen and i love the char but for the soft foods diet you might want to um you might want to uh overcrowd a little bit if you have a big family um, and then Shannon, she's doing the liver reduction diet right now, and that English muffin is making her drool like crazy. Oh man, how I wish I could have that today. Sorry, Shannon, you will be able to have that soon enough. Um, and then Janet has a question. Can you make half of the amount of sauce? Yes, um, you could make half of the amount of sauce. And then also, if you wanted to freeze a little bit of it for later, that would be okay as well. Um, if you're a one or two person household, I would probably just make half of it because that is kind of a lot in the beginning. And for any of you who aren't um, or who recently had surgery, you might want to tone down the sauce a little bit because it does have the fat from the coconut yogurt and the fat from the butter. And as you're learning what you can tolerate um, as far as fat goes um, and avoiding dumping syndrome, then you want to tone it down just a little bit. All right, so that was our comments for now. I have a fun fact for you guys, and there's lots of different folklore out there, but the real St. Patrick was actually born in Britain. Much of what is known about St. Patrick's life has been interwoven with folklore and legend. So historians generally believe that St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, was born in Britain, not in Ireland. 
near the end of the fourth century. Now at age 16, he was kidnapped by Irish raiders and sold as a slave to Celtic priest in Northern Ireland. After toiling for six years as a shepherd, he escaped back to Britain. He eventually returned to Ireland as a Christian missionary. So again, that was interwoven into folklore. Not sure if that's true or not. Found a couple of great articles about it. So, um, so there's that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, where did Eggs Benedict originate from? Was it Ireland? Probably not, no. So there are a few different stories uh, on who created the first Eggs Benedict. The earliest record traces back to the popular Delmonico's restaurant in Lower Manhattan. It's said that Chef Charles Ranhofer came up with the combination in the 1860s when Mrs. Legrand Benedict, one of his regular diners, grew tired of the menu and wanted something new. However, there are a few other stories out there, one involving the Waldorf Hotel and a hungover regular patron. Uh, but looks like Jen is almost ready. I thought that was some fun, interesting news for you guys. So Jen is shaking her head. She learned something a little bit new about some folklore. Probably not true in history. No. Uh, <laughs> and now I think she's ready to start the second recipe. Jen, are you ready? I think I'm ready. All right, let's get this her going. Got to get my... Get your business together, sir. Right? Hi, everybody. We are back. Well, we never really left. I left. I'm back. Time to start recipe number two, which is a St. Patty's Day breakfast burrito. Okay, we have more batteries. Sure. I did check the batteries. Hold on one, you guys. You know, this is Jen's first cook. We have to have something wrong, tech, tech wrong in the kitchen. So we are gonna get more batteries here in just a minute and Maggie is finding them, uh, but we don't know where they're at, Jen. So can you please tell us where they're at? Uh, I think they were in that bin that the camera's sitting on, aren't they? They used to be in the bottom of that. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, I'm gonna talk loud and proud. I'm gonna take this thing off. So funny thing, we always check the battery before, but it always says full, and then it went to empty, I guess, really fast. And we have spare batteries, but not enough. <laughs> so that's okay. All right, I'm just gonna talk super loud and try not to make too many clanky noises. All right, so reset. Now we're going to make our St. Patty's Day breakfast burrito. And if you have looked at the recipe and seen the picture, stick with me. I know it's really green, okay? But I promise you, it actually also tastes really, really good. We wouldn't give you something that didn't. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make some green eggs and we're going to make a wrap out of the cabbage leaves. But in order to do that, we need to blanch our cabbage leaves first because we really need them pliable. And so what we're gonna do is, I've got a pot of boiling water here. We're gonna go ahead and blanch them in this. So we're gonna stick each one of them in for about 30 seconds or so. And I think I can get a couple in here at a time. 
So this way we're, we're not gonna fully cook, but we're really gonna soften them nicely. And then they're gonna fold for us. And then we're gonna be able to tell, you're, we're gonna be able to get this whole guy wrapped up for you. <laughs> so we'll let that go for about 30 seconds. And then what we'll be moving to after these guys are done with their blanching is making our green eggs. And we'll, we'll move over to that section here in a minute or two. But, you know, we wanted to give you guys something really festive. And this definitely is that. The, the eggs are going to have some spinach in them. But spinach is really bland. So if you've ever put spinach in something, it doesn't really bring forward a really strong flavor. So we're going to get a nice green. We're also going to get a lot of great nutrition in there. But then we're going to add some of that basil and, of course, our salt. And that's really going to come forward in the flavor of the eggs. And then also while we are wrapping it all together, then we'll add more flavor. Then we're going to have our goat cheese. We're going to have our roasted red pepper. Then we're going to have a really nice flavor profile coming together. Um, and with this, you know, this was just kind of our combination. You don't have to do these particular flavors. You can do something else if you want something more, maybe, you know, Southwestern, you can do that. You could get your black beans and your avocado, maybe some of your cumin and chili powder, a um, little sour cream in there, something like that. Those turn out really nice. And, you know, you could change it up. Right, you can do maybe some bacon bits and some cheese, a little sour cream with that guy. So you can kind of make this whatever you wanted to. This is just what we've decided to go through. So these are turning out really nicely. I'm not gonna touch it with my hands because it's still kind of hot, but it's just really, you gotta wiggle it, right? We're gonna wiggle these a little bit too, right, right? So these are gonna fold really nicely so that when we put this burrito together, it's gonna work out just fine. One thing that I noticed that really helps to peel the peels off without them tearing, cause they're, they're kind of all like folded in together around the head is I just went underneath and I cored it out so that there's a little bit more release on the bottom initially. And I kind of peeled from the bottom and then tried to release the leaves from each other. And that helps. So I didn't get a ton of tearing in my leaves. Uh, so that, that'll help you out a little bit too. So, I don't know, cabbage is just a little bit stiff, I think. This, that looks like it needs maybe a few more seconds. They keep trying to float to the top. Stay in there. All right, so we'll pull these guys out here in just a second. And then we'll go ahead and move over to the blender. I'm gonna lay these down. It's gonna be good. Yes, I think that'll do it. Yeah, those will be great. We don't need that on anymore. And I'm going to move that out of the way because we need a spot to put our eggs. So I'll actually put a little oil in the pan. We'll start this guy up and get it warming because we got scrambled the eggs. So we're going to get that guy warming while we blend it. Just put a little bit of oil in here. There we go. Not too much. Just to keep it from sticking to the pan. And we're moving and we're moving. Okay. We got the blender here. It's gonna be the easiest way to get all of this whipped together. Plus we've got our leaves in there, right? So we wanna make sure we get all of our leaves blended together very nicely. So what I have in here are the six eggs that the recipe calls for. And because eggs are like gold right now, I also took the white that I was using for the hollandaise sauce and I dumped the whites in here and I put the whites in the bowl for the hollandaise sauce. So we're, you know, we're trying to renew and reuse right here. And so we've got just a little bit of extra white. No big deal. I wanna make sure we use it. I also put the salt in here already. So we've got that. And then we are going to start adding our spinach. This is five ounces of spinach. The recipe says three cups. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it all in. We'll see how it goes. And I've got my Vitamix here, so I can turn this guy on low and it'll start ripping it. What's the song, people? Whip it good. In the shape. You're not too late. Something like that. You're not too late. Does anyone know the. Crack that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll turn this guy up a little bit. If you have a standard. 
that's going to be really loud. You might want to mute me for a second. Are you am I? Okay, so <laughs> we got so many places where mics turn on and off. I think we got it. So I blended the eggs with the spinach, then I tossed in the basil. I'm sure you saw that. Um, and then I reserved some of the basil and I chopped it. We're going to put that into the middle for our filling. So we should be good to go. So we're going to blend again and Sarah's going to turn it off because it's going to get really loud. And we got sound again. And we're back. Okay. So when you do this, make sure you blend it long enough that you get a really good blend. Because if you don't, you're going to have yellow eggs with green specks in it. And maybe that's your jam. That's totally fine. I kind of like it when it's all blended together really, really well. And you just get this really beautiful green. It's like green eggs and ham, Dr. Seuss style right there. So we are going to move back over here into the kitchen area by the stove. We got a pan, it's hot. Got a little spice, got a little heat coming off of that guy. Yeah, it turned out pretty high. So we're gonna go ahead and scramble the eggs right here. And, you know, everyone may have a difference in how they like to scramble. I kind of like them stirred and incorporated rather well. Maybe you guys want to share how you like to do your eggs. Some people like to let them sit and just kind of clump up and get big chunks. Um, I like to stir frequently and scrape the bottom of the pan because I like my eggs to, you know, kind of be soft and still moist and just well incorporated together as opposed to kind of chunky and a little bit more of that rubbery kind of a vibe. So that's just how I like to do it. And in fact, usually at home, when I have more time and I don't have to worry about my timing in a cooking class, I actually like to cook my eggs. I'll scramble them, but I start in a cold pan and you just get them all whipped together, your eggs and your salt. And if you wanted anything else in there, and then you turn the pan on from cold. And that way you also actually get a really nice fluffy scrambled egg as well. Uh, that's the um, French French style, I think is what they call it. You actually put a little bit of butter into the eggs that way too, and then it melts in as you're stirring them and cooking them. And that actually really nice eggs. I did that the first time for my family, and they said, um, please don't do them any other way again. Really, really nice. So that's another way that you can do it. But if you're kind of in a hurry or you just want to get her done, heat up your pan, man. Do it. Get it all nice and hot and toasty. So these are cooking pretty quick. I think we've got a good, good scramble coming along. I'm trying not to spill too much on this oven so we don't have a huge mess to clean up afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not my favorite thing. I don't know about you guys, but kitchen, kitchen cleanup is not my favorite, favorite thing. In the meantime, well, I've got another minute or so of scramble. Are there any other questions or comments that have come through over there, Sarah? No, there has not been any silence. Huh? Yeah, except silence in the round. Kenya says, get your fingers out of there. Uh, the blender. Oh. Like Kenya, <laughs> she had it on low and she, and, she, and she, uh, she was totally safe. I saw her. I, really right, good. but I, no, totally. Like, <laughs> please don't have... Please don't have a Julia Child moment on TV, right? Do you guys remember that SNL bit with Julia Child? I think it was actually Dan Aykroyd, and he was playing Julia Child, 
and she's like spewing blood everywhere and talking about um <laughs> make sure you save the gizzard right you always <laughs> save the gizzard and she's like oh and this make sure you call 911 oh this is a prop phone you know all that kind of a thing so i'm not gonna do that just so you know jen that's a really good impression of I, <laughs> I need to be taller though with shorter curly hair if i'm gonna do that <laughs> okay so i think we're there i mean we got a little bit of little bit of cook left in the eggs um i like to turn off the oven before they're totally done because they're going to keep cooking it's a hot pan and if you want to avoid overcooking your eggs you actually want to turn off the heat a little early and then just kind of keep stirring and incorporating and breaking them up you know how you how you like them to be but these are definitely done great eggs Hala, here we go yummy yummy yeah very hot okay so let's put it all together we got a plate right here we are going to line up our cabbage leaves so you're going to do two cabbage leaves per burrito and we're going to lay them out just like this so the two ends are overlapping a little bit if it's kind of hard for you to see we've just got to over overlap them just a little bit because they're not quite big enough all by themselves if you are right after surgery for example and you're thinking that's going to be way too big yeah maybe you could probably get away with one cabbage leaf and just make a really a little little guy but we're going to do two and what we're going to do first is actually put our toppings in before we put the eggs in you know how you line up all the eggs and then you put the extra stuff and it just kind of falls off everywhere and you're trying to like hold it together so we are going to do the goodies first and we're going to go ahead and i'm just going to sprinkle a little bit so is this coming in a little what are these called this is goat cheese crumbles crumbles we got some goat cheese crumbles that's super handy salad breakfast burrito right so we've got that we've got a little bit of our chopped roasted red pepper super easy so you know it comes in strips i just chopped it up really quick nothing big there so we're going to put we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of that in there get it all nice and all spread around there we go we are going to sprinkle our basil with a little bit of saved reserved basil and because avocados are nature's candy as sarah said we're going to add some avocado so we're going to chop this guy up and we always get multiple avocados because you never know what you're going to get you know and so uh, we i think we found a good one let's see moment of truth again oh, oh yes so out of the three, I definitely picked a good one. And to be kitchen safe, I'm not gonna hold it in my hand and do the cutting because these skins can cut through pretty easily. So I'm just gonna slice it up in the skin and both ways, right? So we're gonna get a little chop and I'm doing it kind of tiny. So if you can see now that I've got my hand oh. out of the way, there we go, hello, it's coming. It's trying to run away. Now we got an avocado trying to get out of here. There we go. So now we got it all nice and sliced up in here. And then I need a spoon to spoon it out of here. And then we'll put some of these crumbles. We'll just kind of crumble it in. There we go. Might have gone a little too far there. There it is. This is really nice. I don't know if you guys have ever done it this way, but I like to do it this way. I think this is how Sarah likes to do it too, because then you're not trying to chase your avocado everywhere. So now we're going to layer in our eggs, and then we're going to see if this sucker is going to fold together for us. So we you got, got this, our... Jen. You got this. Dun, 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 <laughs> dun. Okay, that's rocky, right? So let's get some of our green eggs. If you make this, you might want to let your folks know ahead of time, like just so you know, the eggs are green, but they taste amazing. And we're going to go ahead and I don't want to overfill it too much. I have a tendency to do that. I don't know about you guys. I'm kind of an overfiller. So uh, we're going to roll up a little and we're going to fan in the sides, right? We're always going to fan in. And what you might have to do sometimes is continue fanning inward as you roll it over. 
And did you see that? Look at the break. It is holding together. Bada bang, bada boom, forget about it. OK, OK. Now we're going to cut it. So you guys can see the middle. I'll just cut it right here down the center. Oh, thank you. Did I get applause? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Right, my first shot and it works. <laughs> Except for the battery problem. But other than that, we're OK, right? So there we got it. Now I got juicy hands. So there it is. Now we got it. Oh, do you guys? Oh, they see the seam out sliding I everywhere. I can't wait to eat that. Yeah. Sarah's super excited about eating it. She might be gunning for this guy before the other one. Uh, we'll see who wins. We'll let you know the results next time. Who's the winner of the breakfast contest? The breakfast uh, smash down. Maybe that's what we'll call it. So I think we got through everything, right? It's some really nice green recipes for a holiday or just to make life a little bit fun and amp up the nutritional level in there. So I actually got through everything in pretty good time. Wow, we actually have spur time. So do we have questions? Do we have comments? Do people like the idea of green eggs or are they a little bothered? There are there are questions. OK, let me turn this down. OK, so um, can you potentially use a low carb tortilla instead of the cabbage? Well, Crystal, depending on where you're at in your journey, you could use a low carb tortilla pre-surgery. However, if you are watching your carb count, a lot of times those low carb tortillas have just as many carbohydrates as a regular tortilla, but they pack it full of fiber to drive down that net carb. And if you're post-surgery, that fiber, not going to feel good on your tum-tum. It's not the, the good fiber that you're going to get from the natural vegetables and the fruit. It's going to probably irritate your tum-tum a little bit. So pre-surgery, as you're backing off the carbohydrates and starting to slowly reduce, for sure. Post-surgery within the first year, probably not. Year post-surgery, if you're maintaining your weight, um, and um, looking to add increased variety for sure. Um, and then let's see here. Dixie says, I'm in trouble because I'm such a picky eater. The only thing that looks good to eat here is the eggs. Um, when you eat the cabbage leaves warm, it is not cabbagey at all. It has a really great texture that holds together. And for anybody who doesn't like spinach, not a strong spinach flavor at all. You can actually taste the basil coming through on those eggs more than the spinach, and that spinach is packed full of nutrients. Of course, if you're on blood thinners, you're going to want to watch your, you already know that you're going to want to watch your leafy greens, so this might not be the recipe for you, um, but you got that green cabbage. You could tone it down a little bit if your doctor says that's okay. Um, but not a lot, not a huge strong spinach flavor from the eggs. The spinach makes it really bright green and delicious and you're getting all those nutrients and it actually adds a little bit more moisture to it. The basil shines through more often. And they could always put all these things in a bowl and just top. Yep. And if you don't like the cabbage, um, you couldn't, and especially like right after surgery, third week, probably not a great idea to use the cabbage leaf if you're on soft foods. So you could put these eggs and you'll make it for your family, um, wow them with this amazing recipe that we created, and then um, just put your eggs and the toppings in a bowl because these red pepper, roasted red peppers are soft enough for soft foods. And the goat cheese, oh my gosh, the goat cheese is so amazing. Um, I actually have some cool information for the goat cheese to share with you. So it does contain a lot of pro probiotics, a lot of cheese does. And depending on the type of goat cheese, some goat cheese have, you know, different probiotics than others. Now, interestingly, cheese is a superior carrier of probiotics due to its high fat content and hard texture, which provides protection for the bacteria. So oftentimes when you take a probiotic in a capsule, you're not all of the probiotics get past your stomach acid because it kill your stomach acid kills a lot of the probiotics. That's why we want you to continue taking the probiotic capsule for a long period of time 
while you're adding in other whole food products. Um, so adding the other foods that have pro that contain probiotics can be beneficial and that fat is going to um, help protect it as you are digesting it. Now, if you are um, sensitive to dairy products, uh, this is goat cheese made from goats and not cow's milk. So many people find that switching from cow milk products to those made from goat milk is easier on the digestive system. And this is because the goat milk products, including cheese, have a different protein structure than cow's milk products. They are also naturally lower in lactose, and lactose is the main carbohydrate in milk. And when you're looking at the label and you see carbohydrates and sugar, food manufacturers are not actually adding sugar, well, unless it's chocolate or strawberry milk, then you need to look at the ingredients list. But it is estimated that up to 70% of the world's population has trouble digesting lactose, which causes symptoms like bloating, abdominal pain, gas, and diarrhea. But since goat milk contain, contains less lactose than cow's milk products uh, made from goat's milk, including yogurt and cheese, they may be a better choice for those with lactose intolerance. But it's also sometimes the dairy protein that causes issues with some folks. So goat milk has a lower level of A1 casein than cow's milk. It's a type of protein which may cause milk sensitivity symptoms in some people causing inflammation in the gut. So goat milk contains our products contain mostly A2 casein, a type of protein that has been shown to be less allergenic and less inflammatory. So if you're sensitive to dairy products, you could definitely give goat cheese a try. And a lot of people are more familiar with the Chev, which is the softer cheese, but I've been looking into it because I can't have dairy products and they do have um, goat cheese, Gouda, Parmesan, mozzarella, and cheddar. And so I am going to try it. However, looking online, it can be a lot more expensive. And so I'm going to go to the Albertsons and Fred Meyer and see what I can find that's within the budget because food's pretty expensive right now. Um, so that's our little spiel on cheese. We have a couple other comments here. So Janice, she's cooking for one and asked the produce man if she would cut a cabbage and cauliflower in half. And he did as soon as he... Uh, as soon as he put the other halves on the shelf, someone else grabbed them up saying that was a good idea. That is a great suggestion, Janet. Uh, that's awesome. So oftentimes, especially at Albertsons at Fred Meyer and Fred Meyer, they're really willing to work with you there. Um, so don't be afraid to ask to get a smaller portion. And cabbage is one of those um, heartier vegetables that might be able to be frozen and then warmed up if you're eating in a in a using it in a softer kind of saucy yeah. food. Yeah. Um, so there's always that as well. Yeah. Um, Jeanette says thank you guys so much. We're so much fun. Both meals look delicious. Uh, I think the spinach in, is wonderful in the eggs, yes. And then I have had the cauliflower tortillas, very good. Cabbage is a great idea. Okay. Yeah, there are some like cauliflower tortillas in the store or egg fins, I think they're called. They're not offering any really nutritional value because it's just a little bit of egg white and some, um, some little other ingredients to hold it together. Um, but it is a vessel. Um, and there's also the folio wraps at Costco that are pretty amazing. I used to eat those when I could. And then Audrey says she's making corned beef and cabbage today with carrots and potatoes and onions. One of her favorite holiday favorites, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if it's the healthiest. Um, and yeah. I, she absolutely loves goat cheese. So, yeah. So what was really Steven saying? Okay, so... Oh, that's interesting about the goat cheese and dairy. I really think I'm lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so give it a try. Yeah. Um, so corned beef and cabbage and all of the other things, Audrey. Perfectly healthy meal. Yeah. It, the 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 corned beef is going to be a lot higher in sodium because it's been cured. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's once a year that you typically make yeah. that. And Typically after surgery, for a lot of people who are very, very low carbohydrate, getting a little extra sodium isn't going to make or break your bank um, because we're trying to get you a little bit more. Um, sometimes when people don't have enough sodium, they feel dizzy or lightheaded um, when they stand up, muscle cramps, things like that. And so 
you may need a little bit more sodium in your diet. Um, and then all of the onions and carrots, very low carbohydrate and potatoes, again, not every day can be part. Potatoes are uh, very nutritious, have fiber, have potassium. Um, and then if you're balancing it out with your low carb options, then it's a perfectly healthy choice. And that is all the comments we have. Bam, 12 o'clock on the dot. Let me unmute oh. Jen. So I love Jenny from, from the, the block. block. She, she used to have a little, little and, and now, now she, she has, has a lot. lot. That's, That's right. right, skills in, in, in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Yes. We, we can, can do this, this people. We, we got, got this. this. So we're, we're proud to think this guy survived without Sarah. So, yeah. But man, we are so glad you guys came and joined us today. Thank you for humoring me for my first time in the kitchen. Trying to keep it fun, trying to keep the food going and getting it all right and put together for you guys. And if you, you've tried these, I hope you really enjoy them. Definitely let us know. But we will be back next month. It's April, it's tax season. We got to have something to survive tax season, right? So we'll be coming up with some recipes to lighten your life a little bit during tax season. Otherwise, y'all go and have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Uh, we have Hi. one more. Oh, do we have a uh, little comment? Okay, thank you, Rainy, for uh, bringing that up to our to our attention. Why am I echoing in my own in my own ear? I don't know. Oh, I didn't mute her uh, microphone. Okay, so Rainy, thank you for uh, uh, answering that for Stephen. So. Stephen asks, why are leafy greens a problem with blood thinners? And that's because they are high in vitamin K. And so if you're on warfarin specifically, then it can counteract with the blood thinners. So you always want to speak to your surgeon, or not the surgeon, sorry, your prescribing doctor who is prescribing that blood thinner to you, um, because oftentimes they prescribe an amount to to balance what you are eating in your diet. So you can't be fluctuating foods that are high in vitamin K. You have to be consistent with how much you're eating. So you either have to um, try to watch and uh, um, avoid all high vitamin K foods or be consistent with how much you're eating. So you wanna talk to your doctor if you are on a blood thinner, if you're interested in adding some of these foods that are higher in vitamin K, um, talk to them. All right, so we do have one more comment. Oh, just a lot of thank you guys. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. And we really appreciate you and everything uh, that you bring to our classes. So have a wonderful day and we'll see you next week in the Healthy Living Series if you're signed up. Bye-bye. I can't see. I'm waving. We had 50 people. Oh, sorry.